After the flood, there was an impact on the descendants of Noah and the entire world. The world changed when, Ham first noticed his father's nakedness and his brothers covered him without seeing him. Ham did something weird here, and we will try to explain what he did. So, why is the son of Ham, Canaan he's the one punished and cursed? To understand everything we need to know that Noah's sons were, Shem, Ham, and Japheth in order from oldest to youngest. Here is why this is important. When Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him. Genesis 9 verse 24. His youngest son. So it's Japheth, right? So, after the story of the flood, Noah begins by planting a vineyard and then proceeds to get drunk in his tent. Genesis 9 verses 22 to 25. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father naked and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders, then they walked in backward and covered their father's naked body. Their faces were turned the other way so that they would not see their father naked. When Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan. The lowest of slaves will he be to his brothers. Why does Noah express such a strong curse in response to the seemingly innocent act of seeing his nakedness? What did Noah's young son do to provoke such a reaction from him? Bible commentators have come back with the suggestion that an earlier version of our story may have described a much more serious sin, the homosexual rape of the father while he was drunk. It is highly likely that an offense of this nature would indeed result in the strong reaction described in the text. This hypothesis is further supported by the wording in verse 24. When Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him. When Noah woke up, how could he know what had happened if his son only looked at him? Moreover, the phrase, had done to him, implies a definite and physical action rather than just seeing. The assertion that Noah knew what had happened to him after he woke up from being drunk contradicts the story of Lot. In the story of Lot, also was sexually assaulted by his daughters while he was drunk, but the narrative about him states. Genesis 19 verse 35 Again he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. According to the book of Leviticus, the phrase, he revealed the source of her flow, is a Pharisee for sexual relations. Leviticus 20 verse 18. He has exposed the source of her flow, and she has also uncovered it. Both of them are to be cut off from their people. The sentence describing Noah's nakedness, he got drunk and lay naked in his tent, is apparently meant to imply incest, similar to the phrase, approach any close relative to have sexual relations, in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 18 verse 6. No one is to approach any close relative to have sexual relations. I am the Lord. The sin in the original story is not solely homosexual sex, but rather the act of rape and incest committed by the son against his father, in a situation where the father had no means to defend himself. This act helps to explain the severity of Noah's curse upon his son. Later, Noah's other sons enter the tent and respectfully cover their father without looking at him. Genesis 9 verse 23 but Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders, then they walked in backward and covered their father's naked body. Their faces were turned the other way so that they would not see their father naked. Is there an intervention here by the writers of the Bible who tried to embellish the act to protect Noah and hide what was done to him? And they even continued to write that his two sons covered his naked body to beautify what happened. However, we may never truly know and can only speculate. Why cursed Canaan instead of cursed Ham? 
The most mysterious thing in this story is that even if the rapist truly committed, how is it possible that Canaan is the one who was punished and Noah cursed him? After all, Canaan is Ham's son and Noah's grandson, and he was not involved in the accident. Here is another suggestion, the act of rape was committed by Canaan against his father Ham, and not as described in the case where Ham was the one who raped Noah. Chapter 9 to 10 in the book of Genesis provides a compelling explanation that holds true. It is possible that this theory is correct, since the nation slash children that came out of Ham, are listed in order from the oldest to the youngest, with Canaan being the youngest. Let's change the names and characters. Noah will be replaced with Ham, and Ham will be replaced with Canaan. Ham, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of its wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. Canaan, saw his father naked and told his two brothers outside. When Ham awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him. He said, Cursed be Canaan. The lowest of slaves will he be to his brothers. Remember we changed names. Genesis 10 verse 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Phut, and Canaan. In our story, it is mentioned that the younger son witnessed his father's nakedness and as a result, his father cursed Canaan. From this, we can infer that the father was indeed Ham, and the younger son occurred to be Canaan. When the author changed the original name of the sinful son from Canaan to Ham, he also had to change the name of the raped father from Ham to Noah. Then move the entire account to chapter 9, as Noah's death occurs at the end of this chapter. The change of identity also explains why Shem and Japheth received a blessing and Ham did not. If Ham was the one who committed the crime, why was he presented as someone destined for God's blessing? Another consideration that supports the idea that the original story was about Canaan and Ham is that the story aligns well with historical reality. The Canaanite region was under the political enslavement of Egypt for an extended period. This fact is documented in the El Amarna tablets from the 14th century BC. Therefore, our original story provides an explanation for the subjugation of Canaan to its older brothers, including Egypt. This finding further supports the theory put forth by researchers that the phrase, a man of the soil, appears to describe an unfamiliar character. Interestingly, Noah's connection to the soil is only revealed at the end of his life story, emphasizing his identity as a man of the soil. The Bible writers revealed that Ham, and not Canaan, was the one who committed the deed to his father. In doing so, they also identified the previously nameless brothers as Shem and Japheth. It is interesting to note that in other Noah stories, Japheth is presented as the younger son, rather than Ham. The respected action of the two brothers for their father added a new dimension to the story, allowing the author to drop them with blessings and giving the story a global perspective. Furthermore, there is a distinction between the blessing of Shem and Japheth and the curse of Canaan. The curse of Canaan is more worldly in nature, whereas the blessing of Shem and Japheth carries a religious significance, and it is given with the help of God. Genesis 9 verses 25 to 27. He said, Cursed be Canaan. The lowest of slaves will he be to his brothers. He also said, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Shem. May Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God extend Japheth's territory, may Japheth live in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be the slave of Japheth. The curse aimed at Canaan, which repeats three times, is the most important aspect to consider. Despite the identification of the sinner in the story as Ham, did the author of the Bible make a mistake and it would have been more correct to transfer the curse towards Ham? 
In fact this strange identity is critical to the author's orientation, he was particularly interested in the curse of Canaan. However, the author did not intend to portray Canaan as being under Egyptian rule. Instead, he wrote, May Canaan be the slave of Shem. Based on this, it can be concluded that Canaan was ruled by the descendants of Shem, specifically the Israelites. The author asserts that the Israelites were destined to be the masters of the Canaanites, not the Egyptians. You are familiar with the original story, written and interpreted in various ways. In the story, Ham witnessed the nakedness of his father, while Japheth and Shem respectfully covered their father without looking. After waking up from his sleep, Noah cursed Canaan and blessed his sons, including Japheth and Shem. And thus, humanity began anew after the flood. We hope you learned something new today. If you did, give this video a like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. See you next time.